All right, so next up, we're going to see how to use the cross product to find the area of a triangle. Um, now, again, this particular triangle is in the xy plane, but we'll you know, cheat again and sort of imagine that it's really a triangle that's in three-dimensional space. We'll just add, you know, we'll add the z-axis coming out of the board. And so we'll imagine that when we, when we say that the point A is at 1, 2, you know, we'll think of that as 1, 2, 0, right? Uh, and we say the point B is at uh, 2, 3, there's B, we'll think of that as 2, 3, 0. And that point C, which is at 3, 1, we'll think of that as 3, 1, 0, right? We can do it like that. Um, now, this triangle, you can see, is, uh, is not one that's sort of easy to, you know, like the usual, we do a, like half base times height. And it's a, little, it's a little trickier to work out. Let's say that, you know, we could find the length of one side. We could kind of think about perpendicular slopes here and work out how to drop a perpendicular to get the height. But like that's, you know, it's a lot of work to do it that way. Could be done, but it's a lot of work. So can we do this more efficiently? Is there another way to find the area of a triangle? Well, yes, because if you come back to our picture of a parallelogram, we know how to calculate the area of a parallelogram using a cross product if we have these two vectors representing um, two adjacent sides of the parallelogram. And here's the thing. A triangle, a triangle is half of a parallelogram, right? It's just half of a parallelogram. And, and so if I, if I come over here and I do, let's say I do the vector from A to B, and I'll call that U, and I do the vector from A to C, and I'll call that V, well, we can see that, that you know, I can extend that to a parallelogram, right? And the area of my triangle will be half the area of the parallelogram. And so my area should be one half the magnitude of that cross product, u cross v. Cool. Um, by the way, one of the things that you might want to play around with here, you know, try this out, try it a few different ways. Uh, there are, of course, three sides to a triangle. I could have added another vector w here. Right? And, and you might say, well, what, what if you use that side instead? Aren't you going to get like a different answer? No, you won't. Try it out. Confirm it for yourself. I can do, I could add this side, call it W. You could try doing the magnitude of U cross V, U cross W, V cross W. You know, any of those three possible cross products, you will get the same answer each time. Give it a try. Confirm that it works. Okay? So let's figure out what those vectors are. U. Again, we do head minus tail, so two, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, 0 minus 0 is, well, 0, 1, 1, 0. V, uh, again, head minus tail, so 2, so 3 minus 1 is 2, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 0 minus 0 is still 0. Um, make sure you do this step. A lot of times, if there's one place where students tend to get these types of questions wrong, it's that they take the points and they try to plug points into the cross product. Right? They take two of the three points, they plug them into the cross product. Um, that's not going to get you the answer, right? Uh, the area of the triangle, right, it's not going to depend on where it's located. If I move the triangle around, these coordinates are going to change, right? And if I try to plug those coordinates into the cross product, it, I get a different answer. But the difference is the vectors, those don't change if I move it around, right? Uh, another place where we see why we like this convention with vectors, right, that we can translate them. Magnitude and the direction, they don't change because we're moving both points at the same time. We make the same change to both points, right? So when you do head minus tail, it cancels out. All right. So we'll do the cross product. When you, uh, when you do a few of these, 
just like in that last example, we saw that um, the I and the J components, they will always be zero if you're dealing with two vectors in the XY plane because you have those zeros there. Uh, the only non-zero part is the K component, which we get from here. One times minus one, minus one, subtract one times two. So minus one, minus two, we get minus three for the cross product, right? Um, so the area is going to be one half square root of minus three squared, which of course just takes the absolute value of the minus three, gives me plus three, and I get three over two for the area of that triangle. Great. Um, and of course, you can also do this for triangles in three-dimensional space. So these could be um, three-dimensional coordinates for a triangle, right? Any three points in space will define a triangle. Um, and certainly if it's in three-dimensional space, it's gonna be even more difficult to think about how to do like half base times height or something like that to calculate the area. Um, but this cross product result will, will come to the rescue every time. Um, other things you might wanna do, play around with these triangles, try some different examples. You might wonder things like, hey, is it a right-angled triangle? How, think about what are some of the ways that you could decide if that's a right-angled triangle? Well, one way you could decide if it's a right-angled triangle is does it satisfy the Pythagorean theorem? Calculate the lengths of the three sides of the triangle. Do you see any way that you know the, the longest side should be the hypotenuse? Is the square of the hypotenuse equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides? Maybe, maybe not. You can find that out. Um, you can also use you know, these angle formulas the sine theta here or the cos theta result, right? Uh, if it's a right angled triangle, right, then two of those vectors should be orthogonal. Um, you can see that these two in particular are not, um, right? Um, so if it's a right angled triangle, there should be a pair of orthogonal vectors. So that's another way you could check to see if it's right angled. Um, and if it does turn out to be a right angled triangle, then I guess you could use half base times height, but um, this will still do the job in any case.